Okay, as we continue on with uh, Christy Bladsaw's 882 head, we just got it out of coating. And uh, one thing I want to show you before I clean it up, you can see the residue, and that stuff is brutally hard to get off. Um, you can get some of the easy stuff off with a scraper, but even a wire brush is hard to get it off. You have to use what we call a ziz wheel, which is an orbital sander with a pad. Uh, so if it's that hard here, it's all in here. It filled up all the little grooves, and it will put a protective coating. It's just absolutely worth it. Just wanted to show you that before we went on. We began the process. There was one thing I was wanting to do first. Um, I already know what it is, but I thought you people might want to see how we use the sonic checker. You've heard me mention this a lot on my website. How we use that to determine thicknesses and draw in the shape. Okay, I'm going to go in here and show you how I pick off of the sonic checker and look at the thicknesses inside the bowl um, on the 882 head. First off, before you ever take that sonic checker wand to the head, I cannot emphasize enough how you got to go in here and just shoot a little carb cleaner in and make sure that you get them surfaces perfectly clean. I had to buy one of them wands the first few months I had it, first six months. They were $300 for one of them uh, 15 years ago. I can only imagine what they want for one of them now. But any kind of little metal debris, I mean even stuff that you wouldn't feel, kind of like putting the head on the flow bench, the ports have to be really clean where there's no metal it can pick up. Okay? Now, once we get that done, I'll show you how the sonic checker sets up. This is the BHJ sonic checker and uh, is the number one sonic checking device used by the automotive industry in, in, the, in the United States and probably not the world. There's a lot of cheaper ones out there now, you know, the China invasion like everything else. But none of them match the quality of BHJ CWG-2. Now, it is an older Sonic checker. I bought it brand new in uh, 1997. But as you can see, I took care, I mean guardian care, like a baby of it. Because it was $3,600 back then. The bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to a cylinder head shop that claims to be professionals at porting heads, we're not talking about a shop that says, oh, we can go in there and clean the bowls up and gasket match it, which that isn't nothing, and usually you get nothing out of it because they didn't go in there and really grind the meat. They just knock the sharp edges off and make it look pretty because as an old mentor of mine once told me, Mr. Jerry Goodell, he once said... 90% of this is cosmetic. When they see it and it's shiny, then that means that they'll reach in their pockets and pull the billfo out, which I have to agree, he's right, but it's not the way that I do it. We got enough people out there that claim to be cylinder head people that aren't. So anyway, let's get a look at the main tool that a cylinder, set, a cylinder head shop has to have to claim to be a porting service. Okay. As you can see, it shows what it is, uh, BHJ Products, Newark, California, wall thickness. You have a low calibration and a high calibration. I got a piece of metal that's got a curved piece of cylinder bore, like a chop section uh, of a bore, and it's cut off, and there's actually four pieces of it, and one of them's from Chrysler, one of them's from Ford, then GM, and there's another one, I can't think of what it is, but just to show you that, that, that each company uses different metals and there's castings, and I mean, that's been known for years, but it can make a few thousands difference. So you got to look at, I go off of the cylinder head dependent on the block, common logic dictates that whatever foundry they use on the block, they used on the head. I might not be 100% right, but that's the way that I do it. So it begins uh, pretty simply by just turning it on. All right, then you can see the numbers that will pop up. 
Uh, the next piece of interest, there's two of them. One of them's for blocks, but this one right here is the one that I use. You see that long neck? Okay. Now right here on the end of the tip, it's hard for you to see this probably. There's a divider line in the middle of it. If you can see it, one side's green, then a silver line in the middle, then the other side's green. One side sends, the other side receives the signal. And um, like I said, this isn't God by no means, and it ain't 100% to answer, but it's better than doing nothing. And it just takes years of playing with this and using it all the time to develop a feel of knowing when it's lying to you and knowing when it's telling the truth because what happens if there's a porosity bubble back there once again where the cylinder head has had years of use and antifreeze and water hadn't been changed properly there might be a bubble back in there and it hits the one side of that bubble and turns around and hits the other side well it's going to give a false reading so it's just going across it, hitting averages and drawing it, which I've gotten pretty good at it. I, I've gotten here about the past uh, 12 years where I'm really good with it most of the time. I, I usually don't miss. So anyway, that's that end of it. Let me show you how it works inside the cylinder head. What you see right here is white lithium grease. I keep it right beside of the head. Of course, there's my sonic checker right there. Then there's the, the cylinder head. I'm going to try to ease over here and see if I can get my fat hind end over and not block up half the picture and so you can see what's going on. Okay. First, you take your sonic wand and you're going to go in here and dip it in a clean area of the lithium. Um, the reason you do this is it acts like a contact patch. And if you don't have the lithium on there, this turkey just will not work. You gotta make sure you got a decent little chunk right on the little green piece. Okay, there we go. Then you come over here and put it inside the bowl to make different measurements. I'm gonna try to see if I can somehow get this where you can view it and see the numbers go up and down on the gauge pretty hard. Okay, now you can see I got the grease on the end of it. Let me see if I can get you a little more view. Okay, now I'm going to put it on here, and like I said, it takes quite a few tries. I usually put my thumb right behind it to try to level it out. All right, now up here, I'm sitting here moving this wand, and what you cannot see where you're at is... That I'm sitting here out of the corner of my eye looking at the gauge go up and down. And just because I know about what the thickness is, the machine will start slowing down right around the area that the thickness truly is. Which from where I'm at right now, and then you have to pick it up and move it a couple of times. You pick it up and move it two or three times. You draw an average, see where it slows down. I'm seeing right now 214, 215 thousandths is the thickness right there where that bowl is. All right, I'm going to show you now what the sonic checker looks like while this mess is going on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on the, on the machine, and I'm going to do exactly the spot that I was just doing where you can see the gauge numbers. And look at the jump. This is where it just absolutely will drive you out of your mind sometimes. All right, see how it jumps? See, look at them numbers all over the place from 6 to 2. But as you move this around, it'll settle in and you know the feel. Now look at there. See, I'm getting 222. I'm moving it backwards. It's kind of like using a dial bore gauge. And see, right there where it seems to be sticking the best. Okay. Now what I do at this point, I saw the number 216, 214. Let me tell you how I do this. Okay, as you can see, 
I ain't moved it nowhere, but that one spot I picked up on it. See, I hit it here, then I move it over a touch there, then go down there in the bow. I kind of do like a little sweep, a little patch, okay? And I'm recording these numbers as I go or looking at it. When I finally end up, I always pick the lowest number, like if it's 214, then just what I've done over the years, I found out it works best if I take and round it down to the nearest uh, 20th, or in this case, I'd bring it to 200. I disregard the 14 thousandths because I pretend that the 14 thousandths is water bubbles and porosity on the outside of the port. So I know that right there in that area, I can get 200 thousandths. Now let's look at the map. It sure looks bright on my LCD. I might have the brightness too high on it, but I hope it ain't showing it like that. I'll have to view us in the viewer and see. But anyway, on the head, you remember where we was at on the bowl where I showed the 214, okay? I was getting that 214 right around between 912. So then I'll take and I'll write, instead of writing 214, I'll write .200. 200, right in this area right here. I'll go through the port and mark that whole area with that sonic map on that area and only right here on the short term because no meat is ever taken away from the bottom. In all these years of doing cylinder heads, I've yet to go in there and grind on the floor. It's just wrong move. However, right here, absolutely, this is real critical because you got a water jacket coming in right here that looks something like this that cools the valve seat that's what transfers the seat so you can't go too crazy here you know um, you'd probably come in and try to cut some of this away like that to straighten it up leaving some the sonic checker will tell you in this area how close you're getting that see the sonic checker is just the thing while it might not be perfectly accurate, once again, I don't want to repeat myself, still, when you get numbers that close to it and you can subtract the set factor of safety, which I use 14 on the bow, I round it pretty close to that, it gives you where you know that you're not going to bust through and it can make all the difference in the world. See? So, that right there, which this is an area you chop a considerable amount and do a lot of work to, is this roll of radius right here and enlarging it for the bigger valve. So, this will be, I call it tiger striping the port. I'll have this whole thing sonic mapped out. Now, for the fun part. On a head like this, I'm not doing it this stage four. I, I know what they are. I've done so many of them, but this ain't maximum effort by no means. Um, number one, that ain't what she wanted. You go getting them too big with too much of a cubic inch, you run into problems. Then there's the money issue. You know, I I don't uh, I have the lowest rates. I've called everywhere in a 300 mile radius, and just I know nobody can compare for the bang per buck because I'm actually cutting the crap out of there. But there comes a point that you got to draw a line, and when you go in here and do this, uh, cutting that much meat out, it actually goes hour per cc, but we'll get into that later on. But having that sonic thickness map plotted out, once you do that, you got to do it 16 times, 8 intake and 8 exhaust. So I'm going to have 8 pieces of paper on the intake, 8 pieces of paper on the exhaust. Why do you do that? Well. The head core shifts, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about by the core shift. Okay. Now, you can see right here, this is the port that I sonic, this casting line. Okay? You can see it. I can see it through the view. Wait a minute, excuse me. I can see it through the viewfinder right here. You see that casting line? You can take your finger and feel it, and you can feel on one side it's taller and one side it's lower. When the metal is poured into the mold, it moves around. Okay, it's uh, 
just I guess the impact of the metal, the movement of it. They've gotten real good at it in years, but back in these days they move and you can feel the humps and all that in it. So if it shifted this way on this head, that means that all the ports on the end areas are going to be thin, the other ones will be thick. Let's say I jump over here to this head. Wow, it's the other way. Then you have to take the sonic map, look at the thicknesses, and draw 18, uh, or excuse me, 16 port dimensions that when you go in there to do it, 8 intake and 8 exhaust, you have the sonic map with the thicknesses drawn. Then you go in there and draw the map of, you pick the worst port that it is, the very worst one. Let's say it's this one. This is the worst. It's got the most coarse shift. that's in the most awkward place compared to the other head and this head combined. Then you go in there and this is the port you make the math off of in a shape. You'll have a warning chart showing the thicknesses. Then you go in there and you plot your measurements and your stuff of what you're going to do. That is when the sonic checker becomes literally worth its weight in pure gold bullion, if not platinum or whatever it is. There's, you just got to have it if you're going to get serious. Anything over a stage three uh, requires a sonic checker. Now this is a stage four and I'm not using it on this head, but that's because I've probably only done about 150 of them in the past three or four years. So, you know, I've already made this sonic map 20 times. I know what I'm not going to get myself into, but I just wanted to show you that's the method. That's what we use it for, and it and it's matters. It's priceless, okay? So let's go ahead and finish cutting Marty and Christie's head, and let's get done with this. Real quick, I thought I'd show you. I was getting ready to scrape it off, put the gasket on. This is a fairly sharp, and I keep them sharp scraper. Look at this. You can't get this stuff off with a scraper. It is just embedded. Now, that's the coating that's inside. Look at that. Okay? And it just, uh, it's just incredible. Of course, I know that uh, K and W <laughs> didn't design it to do that, but it's just trial and error. It just, as you can see, and imagine what it's doing inside the port where it was in there under pressure, and this was just the excess that drained off when I took the plate off. So, as you can see, it's well worth it. The only way I'll get that off is, like I said, with a ziz wheel. But I just wanted to show you how 